today I'm going to be speaking with Miss Bianca Austin, the aunt of Brianna Taylor. How are you today? How are you? I'm doing great. It is an honor to speak with you today. Oh, it's a pleasure to speak with you as well. Thank you. So let's get right into it. So when you think of the similarities between all the families or like close friends of, um, you know, the people who have been killed of police brutality, when you think of all their situations, what bothers you most? Um, most of all, it's the pain, the disappointment, um, knowing that they lost a loved one tragically and unnecessary. Um, a lot of these situations can be avoided, and they're not. Um, so, and, and that's what motivates me to stand in solidarity and travel and just make sure, like, you know, people in our situation have support. Of course, and that's a very important thing to do, making sure that you're getting out there marching and uh, spreading the word about what's really going on in the world. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and, and part of protesting is a big part of results in, in, in um, a healing process, too. Um, it's a way we can release our stress without, you know, going in and doing something stupid. So, you know, I think we'll, we'll rather be out here peacefully protesting than burning down buildings, you know what I mean? So, um, it's a stress reliever as well. It's a way for we can express ourselves. Of course, and that's a little bit what they're about to start doing in the march. Exactly. <laughs> um, so really quick, um, just for my last question, is there a personal motto or saying or quote that you kind of live by in regards to like the protests and everything going on in the world? Um, be true to yourself um, um, and be genuine. Um, and I always tell myself, um, just tell your story. Tell her story and make sure we're honoring your, your family member in the best way you, you can. Definitely. And you've done an amazing job of that. Darling, appreciate it. <laughs> well, I see they're trying to get everyone uh, gathered together so we can start marching. So thank you for speaking with me today. And thank you for doing everything that you're doing. And I hope you continue to do everything that you're doing. And I take my hats off to you. Thank you. That's all for this interview. Bye. Today I'm going to be interviewing Travis Keynes, who is the older brother of George Floyd. How are you today? I'm doing just great. How are, what's going on? I'm doing good. Thank you for letting me interview you. It's all right. It's all right. It's okay. All right. Well, let's get right into it. So in what ways can people support All Black Lives Matter, who, um, you know, for the people who have been lost, um, specifically making sure that there's a better future for my generation? For your generation, we need you younger generation, which we call millennium, since I'm an older guy, we call millennials. We need, y'all need to understand that we are here in solitary for every youth in America, every child that's been born in America that, underst that don't understand that once you get older, you are someone. You know I mean, you're someone when you're born. And um, it's, it's not the way you're raised. You know, you could be raised in poverty, some bad conditions and everything. Like me and my brother from another mother, John Floyd, we was raised from the slum, but we still was someone. So as kids, you know, uh, we learned and know that you have to understand that y'all are the future. You got to put your boots on the ground too. You know, you have a voice, just like you're talking to me right now. Right. You have a voice, you got to get out there and say something. You know what I mean? Uh, and and just make you understand, I'm your brother's keeper. You have to be, you know what I'm saying, your brother or your sister's keeper. You know, so that's it. And what you were saying about how even though, um, like you were still considered somebody, something that I kind of like realized not too long ago, um, but something that I kind of realized and thought about is that even though some people like me consider themselves in a sense nobody, nobody is still somebody. somebody yes, yes. And you have to keep that in mind, you know what I mean? Uh, we all are human beings, you know what I mean? Some of us are fathers, some of us are daughters, some of us are, 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 are grandmothers and everything else. But uh, you, you, first of all, you're a human being. You know what I mean? You could be a father, son, a daughter, a mother, anything. We're human beings. And you want to understand, growing up as a kid, until you get older, that you are someone. And you make it known 
you know, when these things like this happen in America, voice your opinion and go vote. Yeah. As soon as you get older enough to vote, go vote. Yep, that is my first plan. So before we wrap up, is there anything else really quick that you would like to share? We want to thank Delaware for inviting us. And um, let y'all know Travis Keynes, Jacob Blake, Bianca, and Cortez Rice. We all love you, and we're here for you. All right? All right, well, I appreciate that, and thank you for letting me speak with you. No problem, no problem. Hello, everyone. I'm Tian Sermons reporting for Light Screen Action, and today I'm going to be speaking with Jacob Blake Sr., the father of Jacob Blake Jr. How are you today? I'm great, Queen. How are you? I'm doing great. It's so nice to get to speak with you again. It's my pleasure, baby. My pleasure. All right. So just for my first question, kids are really taught about what's going on in the world today and are, in a sense, sometimes lied to or just not taught at all. So what things do you think kids should do to really get out there and learn more about what's really happening in the world today? In my opinion, young people need to read more. Young people need to read the classics. They need to understand where they come from. You need to know who Shaka Zulu is. You need to understand what Jomo Kenyatta says. You need to understand uh, Steve Biko. You need to understand Frederick Douglass. You need, there's a, a, a multiplicity of people that you all need to read about. Once you have an understanding of where you come from and the kings and the queens that you are your, your descendants of, you will uh, appreciate yourself so much more and you'll act accordingly. Yes, definitely. And it's really, it really is about more about learning about everything that's going on at home because, like I said, they don't really teach us all about this in school and about what's really going on. So it's about taking that initiative at home to take time, read, as you said, and learn more about our culture. Well, I, I think young people need to, uh, it's a uh, art. Conversation is an art. If you don't practice conversation, then you're, you're belittling yourself. Uh, young people need to put down the phones, uh, put down the game paddles, and learn how to talk to, to one another. I did not learn how to be a good public speaker uh, playing Sega Genesis or the games. I, I became a good public speaker from practice, from reading, from understanding uh, your, your people that are in the crowd, understanding tactics of, of conversation. Because public speaking is nothing but a conversation with a bunch of people. And you have to get your point across, but you have to learn how to do that. Yes, definitely. So a lot of the people here today were either related to or really close to people who have been killed by police brutality. So what do you think needs to happen so that other families um, don't have to go through the same situation as the relatives or friends here today? We must be vigilant. We must be serious about what we're doing. We must understand that we cannot sit down. We have to keep going. We have to keep representing what's happened to our people so that it does not happen again. We have to understand the power that we possess. As black and brown people, we possess power. And we have to speak power in the truth, in the action, everything. It's up to us. Nobody's gonna sit around and give you anything. You know, nobody gave you a microphone and the ability to interview people. You took the initiative and became something. So we must take that initiative and be what we can be. Yeah, that's also some really great advice. So for my last question, is there anything else you want to share? Anything, um, you know, that just comes to mind when you think of everything going on in the world that you would like to share before we wrap up? Well, we're here in Delaware for the Moses family. I'm holding the baby of the young man that was killed. It's my duty now to step in and become a surrogate grandfather for these babies. It's our duty to be the community and the village that raises these children. We have to go back to love. 
That's what Families United is all about, love. The Justice Reform Group is about changing laws, but the Families United is talking about love. And let's get back to love, because I love you, little girl. I never hesitated to interview with you in D.C. So you can never change. I'll never change. Never. Yeah, love is definitely a strong power that we need to, in a sense, to learn again, but really just, it's, while it's about love, it's also about community love. Not just love from your family or your best friends, community. I love everybody in this room, and, and I don't, if you look like me, I'm going to love you. I'm going to give you the opportunity to break my heart. You understand? But we have to give each other that opportunity. You know, you can't judge, look at somebody and judge. They do that all the time. We can't become them. You know, we have to stay us. That's all I'm saying. We have to stay us. Your mother is a beautiful person because she's got your back, baby. And we, we have to, we understand, your mama included, that we're going, we're, we're headed somewhere where we have to go. And one day you'll be here by yourself, but you'll take what your mother has given you. And it'll keep you going. It's in your eyes, girl. Success is in your eyes. It's in your spirit. You have to tap into it and become that. Don't let anybody tell you what you can't do. They told me that my whole, I own my own company for 30 years. They told me when I was young, you know, I was going to end up in the penitentiary or dead. I'm still here, baby.